This video is going to go through the combination of Grammetry and CombiGuide for a full arch case. Now we're going to go through the whole protocol from hello to goodbye, start to finish from uh, initial records all the way through to the final seating of the temporary prosthesis. So the two products that we're going to combine are CombiGuide and uh, Grammetry OptiSplend. Uh, the CombiGuide is a surgical guide that's used for bone leveling and implant placement. Uh, site drilling and implant placement, and then Grammetry is what we will add to it for the digital workflow uh, to design a prosthesis on the same day. The tools involved in this particular case are the OptiSplint, the CombiGuide, Trio Scanner, Stellar Acrylic in a white, uh, white color, uh, Strawman BLX implants, and the VIS prosthetic screws, uh, along with some other things, but those are the main tools that we're going to use. With all CombiGuide cases, we start off with guided surgery. The records are upper lower STL files, comb beam CT, um, some photographs of the patient smiling, and uh, we get the case ready to go for the online meeting for you. And hopefully it's maybe 15, 20 minute meeting or, or maybe less uh, for us to plan the implants. Now the significance of uh, combining this type of guide is that we have uh, articulated casts. Uh, we take measurements of occlusal space uh, measurements of prosthetic space, smile analysis. We go through the whole, the whole uh, uh, a gambit to make sure that the prosthesis it has ideal thickness for longevity and that the implants are placed uh, ideally and that there's a plan. So you can see here the red line is uh, the bone reduction line. And then there are other lines here that we can easily use to measure prosthetic thickness along with rules, you know, top of the implant to the screw access. So the case will be fully planned uh, and once it is, we, uh, in about eight days, we ship it to the doctor and we ship this here, uh, two, two simple apparatuses, which is the pin guide and the fixation base three and the, and the osteotomy guide. All right. So let's, uh, let's flash forward to the day of surgery. Um, in this particular case, uh, Dr. Deliberato and Dr. Shapiro, they ordered the, uh, the surgery mat, which normally comes with a, a chrome case. Uh, but they love the surgery mat so much uh, that they, there, there's an a la carte purchase for it. Totally worth it. Uh, buy the, uh, um, buy the surgery mat, tape it to the wall. The surgery mat gives you uh, a pan. It gives you all the images of the guides and how they relate to the bone, uh, the drilling sequence. It gives you actually gives you an area down here to keep track of the torque values during surgery and uh, which pins to use. And it really gives you nice guidance through the surgery, uh, even cross sections of the pin. And then the mat part uh, goes on the counter and you line up your implants, your multi-unit abutments, temp cylinders, uh, the parts you're going to use uh, for the surgery. In this case, it was a BLX, very aggressive implant. Actually, it's a nice implant, gives you a lot of confidence that you're going to deliver uh, because of the, the torque, the initial torque that it provides. Uh, Combi guide is uh, is cold sterilized, so just a bowl. Don't don't put it in the autoclave. It's it's plastic. So that's about 20 minutes for surgery. Um, get the scanner uh, warmed up, ready to go. Don't want to wait for it when the, we're in the middle of surgery. Okay, in this particular case, it's the, uh, the, the three-shape uh, Trios uh, 4, I believe this scanner is. All right, let's jump into surgery with a combi guide. Uh, as with all of our Chrome and combi guides uh, uh, products, the pin guide, the plastic seating guide, is seated and to make sure that it fits. There are windows on the occlusal and sizal. Make sure that it fits. There's no rocking. Once it is, remove it. Uh, lay a labial flap all the way down to the level of the fixation base. And then deliver the fixation base uh, pinned to the pin guide. And this will be held firmly in place and pinned. We won't go through the whole pinning process, but there's one, two, three, four pins that hold the fixation base uh, very uh, firmly during the entire surgery. And you can see here, there's a gap. There's a, this is floating guide patented technology. And that's going to be important to know uh, for the scanning process, especially uh, later uh, with, with the carrier guide. We'll, we'll explain that. So at this point, you'll take a scan. And the scan here, this, the intention of this scan is to capture the fixation base, which is roughened. You can see we roughened it up here to make it easy to scan as opposed to shiny chrome. Uh, scan the facial and you know, you're going to get the occlusal and then scan the bone and the teeth. Now we do not need the opposing and the bite 
and all the, the land areas and so forth that you would normally do, that you normally capture, because we have all this back in the laboratory because we made CombiGuide. We already have the teeth and the bite and the opening. If we open the bite on the articulator, we already have all that captured. We just need to introduce this, the teeth, back into the original bite so we can articulate. But you must pick up the fixation base so that we have a reference for the end of surgery. And you'll, you'll see what we're, what we're talking about. All right, so scan away, facial, occlusal, and the facial of the teeth. You know, if, you, if I rolled behind, you would notice that the, the, the linguals of the teeth were only captured a little bit. This is what we want. This is the bite. This is the bite reference. And in this case, the doctor left a molar, is going to leave a molar back here. So he scanned it as a nice um, second reference. All right, surgery. Teeth come out. Uh, bone is leveled down to the fixation base. Uh, this this is the bone leveling surface. So from here back, palatally, uh, that is going to be a smooth transition from metal to bone. So that gives you nice guidance for bone reduction. And you can double check the bone reduction with the carrier guide. The carrier guide is seated. This must seat passively. Make sure there's no rocking in this at all. And then you know you've reduced enough bone and the tissue is out of the way. If this rocks, go back and uh, adjust the bone or um, you know reflect more tissue if needed to make sure it seats perfectly. Next step, uh, drill the sites. This is a, a metal osteotomy guide, very rigid. It has little nubs here for rotation to make sure the indexing is perfect when you place the implants. This osteotomy guide has four. There's one additional because of the space right here wasn't enough space for a sleeve. You'll, you'll see in just a minute. Go through the drilling sequence, place the implants, I'd right, go through that that protocol, and then, and then, uh, uh, in this case, there's one extra osteotomy guide because the sleeves are so close. So, drill, place the implant, and then uh, perform some bone profiling if if needed, especially back on the angled ones. Uh, profile the bone, uh, just a good good habit to do on every case for multi-unit abutment seating. All right, implants are in. The next step is to place the multi-unit abutments. And then uh, we always leave the handles in just to confirm the, um, the, the direction, the angle, to make sure that it's the same as the plan, which you can see here it is. And you can see up here on the surgery mat, the trajectory of the multi-unit heads is just as planned. All right, now this is an angle, this is an angle, so this probably you know rotation off just a few degrees here, but it works perfectly especially with uh, uh, angled screw channel screws. You know, this can be corrected uh, very easily in software with the special screws that we use for grammetry. Okay, next step, um, the, the uh, handles come out, the um, scan bodies go in. I'm gonna call them scan bodies. They're really, they're just simple uh, healing collars. And we work with many different healing collars on the market, all the popular ones. You'll seat these, you'll seat the carrier guide. These particular ones are the protective caps for screw retained abutments from Strawman. We have this library. This library uh, directly uh, correlates back to the OptiSplint. And this will be digitized. Now, when you receive a case, this will not be clear. This will be tooth color and it'll be rough on the surface. So it's very easy to scan. This one is a little bit tricky to scan. All right, so we wanna digitize all this and you must capture the facial of the fixation base to reference back to the original scan of the day of surgery. Okay, so scan away. You can see the doctor scanned the molar back here as that extra reference. And then just carefully waving around the arch. Now you're gonna see here, this is, this is obviously, this is always an issue if it comes up. This is a double scan. There's a little scan here, extra. This is this is um, like a uh, a duplicate. The, the scanner is a little bit lost. I believe the AI was turned on, so it corrected it. Uh, and this is a little um, off right here, and it's a little bit off. So it was it was having a stitching issue. If you can't correct this with AI, then start over. And if you can turn the AI off, then scan with the AI off because things are moving and it's, and, and the software is trying to be more intelligent than, uh, than, the, than the surface, which is moving. Turn the AI off if possible, and then just keep scanning. Now the goal here, as mentioned before, is to, you can see it corrected, 
right there. But the goal here is to scan the scan bodies, the carrier guide, and the fixation base. Take time with this. Uh, it, it's, it, it'll be a pattern type of thing. You want to scan across, just like you do with a crown and bridge case, but try not to confuse the scanner too much with moving the wand handle around. Try to do consistent flows left to right. Uh, but you'll see this scan looks really good. All right, that the trio scan did a nice job. And I would recommend always scanning in black and white or, you know, in monochromatic. The color's fancy, yes, but you really want to see where the holes are. So scan in, uh, in monochromatic color. Okay, this, uh, the, the, the healing collars come out. The, uh, the carrier guide comes off. And the next step is to place the opti splint the opti splints in the mouth. Screw them down and screw them down. Uh, just maybe finger tighten so you can still rotate them because you want to make sure that none of these are touching. Uh, if, if they're touching, it's, it's okay as long as they're fully seated. All right, but they don't always, they don't really have to be touching. So finger tighten them down until they're all in. Uh, take an occlusal view of them and rotate them until they're close and then tighten them down. A contra angle driver is always nice to have to, to seat them. And at this point, uh, once, once all the opti splints are in, use this little handle here. In, in this case, we use four steps, but use this little handle to deliver the frame to the, uh, the opti splint. And you'll, you'll see other videos and other images on our, on our website about exactly how to do this. Uh, but this frame will sit on all the horizontal wings of the opti splint. So there's a, there's a vertical tower wing and there's a horizontal wing. So the frame, this is, we, we put this in upside down, which is okay. It just seemed to fit better. And we looted it with stellar acrylic like so, and we light cured it. Okay. That is all you do with the opti splint and then quickly remove it. We're not going to scan in the mouth. We don't, we never scan the opti splint in the mouth. And I say never it's, it's optional. If the doctor wants to scan it in the mouth, that's fine because then you can, you can do everything. You can pick up the bone, the opti splint, and everything in the mouth. But this, these are these are very bloody surgeries, and it's really nice to be able to scan it outside the mouth in a more of a controlled environment. Okay, opti splints out. Set it on the counter. Don't scan it now. Let's move on with uh, with the surgery. Okay, next step: the fixation base comes out, the pins come out, the uh, the healing collars um, uh, go in, suture around the healing collars, and then at this point you have an optional. Uh, third scan. Uh, many of the cases, we just simply build the intaglio of the prosthesis up from the bone two and a half millimeters because we don't always get this scan. So it's an option. Uh, but if you choose to scan it, then I would definitely recommend scanning it in uh, monochromatic color, which you'll see here in a minute. There we go. Scan it in monochromatic. It's a lot easier to see the holes. Scan away. And now we have uh, now we have the tissue position for the intaglio of the prosthesis. Again, it's optional, but the scan really turned out nicely, and we can build to this very effectively. Now, at this point, uh, the, de the decision has probably already been made, but are you going to uh, keep the patient in the office and go through the process where we'll, we'll provide the file to print within two hours? Print, nest, clean, cure, beautify, seat. Now, if you have that down to a system, keep the patient in the office, fine. If you're new to this, um, dismiss the patient. They can go home, they can come back tomorrow. You'll, you'll not be rushed, you can make a beautiful prosthesis. Patients always appreciate it more the next day uh, when, they've, when they've recovered. So patient's gone, and uh, in this case, patient's gone. The, the opti splint is sitting on um, just a, a, a surgical napkin and we're going to scan it. And the, the, the main uh, protocol, the, the primary protocol to scan the opti splint is to scan the frame first, the frame and the, the looting material. So get a nice base of, of a scan of that entire area back there, okay, until it's on the screen. Then you'll come out to each one of the opti splints individually and scan the round head. This is the scan body, that part. All right, so scan and then return to the base and come out and scan. Now these opti splints are pretty close, so you're going to pick up two at a time and hopefully the AI is turned off and it's not getting, you know, confused. Okay, come out. 
and go back and come out and go back until you can see it really nicely on the screen. In this case, um, I, uh, we scanned uh, the OptiSplint uh, in, a, in a little different direction here just to make sure we picked up the round heads. So we came at it from the left and from the right. And it was a, it was a really nice scan that we took. Here's the scan back in the laboratory. Very accurate, very nice work. Now that the, uh, the case is scanned, it's digitized, uh, you'll upload specific files to the laboratory. Uh, this is the first scan right here with the teeth and the fixation base. Second scan, fixation base, carrier guide, and healing collars. And then third optional scan is over here on the bottom right, which is the healing collars and tissue. Those three scans. These two are mandatory. And then this one is an option. I would definitely recommend sending all three. And based on that, we are going to design the case. Day one is finished. Let's go to day two. Uh, we have already fabricated the restoration, I'll, and I'll show a little bit of that, the records. But I wanted to show that, uh, that the plan, which was, it, it does show a denture, but we did a, a workup a week prior to surgery. And this shows the implant positions are the same as the plan. Now, you remember this one was a little bit rotated in surgery. Well, we used our special grammetry screws and we made it still in the middle of the tooth. Angled screw channel. Just a, a brilliant screw. Okay, back in the laboratory, we have received the files. Now, these are the files that we already had, right? This is the, uh, the pre-operative files that we scanned. These are just, just um, stone cast with a hybrid on the upper and we're, you know, we're doing the lower. And then performed a wax up a quote-unquote wax up the week before a digital workup just to make sure the doctor and us were all on the same page of where the uh, where the teeth were going to be set arch form uh, aesthetics etc all right so that's what we sent to the doctor as a as a preview and on the day of surgery we are bringing back in the files that the doctor captured okay this is basically the study model and we uh, we brought it back into the original uh, lower position and now, if we open this bite, if we made any modification uh, to, to the bite, then it will be, uh, it'll be uh, r registered and we can plan to fill the gaps, right? There's gaps here because the bite was changed a little bit. And then we build into it. We build the doctor the prosthesis and uh, um, send a preview if the doctor wants. Otherwise, we go right to manufacturing. In this particular case, we manufactured uh, the case at the laboratory and uh, um, on, the, on the same day, made it beautiful, worked on it a little bit in the morning, drove it over to the doctor's office, and, uh, and had a really nice seating appointment. And this is coping free, right? No copings, just the uh, just grammetry screws. Kind of, you can't, won't be able to tell, but that one's a little bit of an angled screw channel there on that side. And here's the prosthesis. Got some talented people here at the laboratory that make these beautiful. And uh, the next day, so this is the next day at uh, noon. I went to the doctor's office, brought the prosthesis, brought the screws, bought the special driver, and doctor took off the healing collars, seated the prosthesis. This was a very quick, very quick appointment. A little bit of adjustment on occlusion, and I think that was because the scanner had a little trouble with uh, the AI and... Uh, and scanning that carrier guide. Uh, but we got really nice contact right at the very beginning. I think that this was actually the first tap tap. A little bit of equilibration, a little just that just blood that cleaned up. And then beautiful. That is Grammetry and Combi Guide Full Arch Protocol start to finish. Please post any questions and uh, share with your friends. Thank you.